welcome to the Northwest Farrier Show. I'm Gavin Cooper. And I'm Billy Lovell. We're headed to the spring contest for the Farriers Association of Washington State in Warden, Washington. We're going to take you along with us. Our state association, FAWS, or the Farriers Association of Washington State, puts on an annual contest every spring where it draws out people from Washington, Idaho, and Oregon, and we compete. We build horseshoes against each other in a time limit. The judge beforehand comes up with a shoe list of specific shoes and gives us uh, the actual dimensions of each shoe. So starting with the section of steel, what size it is, thickness, width, how long, and then it gives us the dimensions of each shoe. And then we have to try and mimic his shoes or create his shoes to his specifications in a time limit. The first class is the Eagle um, Eye. Yeah, we got the Eagle Eye, which is basically a test of, of fit. Um, they give you a, a shoe or a foot to uh, go off of as a pattern, as you would in your everyday work, and just try to make a horseshoe that fits that pattern. And, and uh, whoever comes up the best size and fit wise and you know everything else has to come together as well but size and fit is really the main test uh, you know oh, you also you only get 10 seconds to yeah. look at the foot or one the look. pattern one you look one look one 10 second look and you better you know cut the right amount of steel and and hope you come up to size because that's kind of one of the biggest tests of it as well is <laughs> oh, we gotta do the left front. Take a picture. Take a picture, take a picture yeah. <laughs> Which one? Move along, move along. Hey, bag in the way. What do you think, Zach? Oh, size one. We yeah. Can do it. And I'm thinking it's like five and an eighth wide yeah the typical two and like mm -hmm. three quarters that's all i'm gonna do <laughs> all right
See what we got here. G Coop me. Mr. Lovell. What do we got Zach Uting here at? Not a draft shoe. Got to be Zach to it. <laughs> That's the way to be. The wrong size, got her. <laughs> <laughs> Eagle eye down. Big dog. <laughs> it's like they'll do multiple Eagle Eye runs in a row and it'll start at 20 minutes and the time will shrink, so it'll go from like 20 minutes to 15 minutes, and then right, 10. Right. It's tough. It's yeah. They, they you know intentionally set it at a at a difficult time limit. You know they don't want to give you any more time than than they think you could possibly need. You know that's the um, test, and that's the test. Yeah, and it's hard because when you're making one horseshoe at a time, uh, you know when you put it in the fire, you're not necessarily obviously you're not able to work on it while it's heating up. So it's actually, you know, easier sometimes to make two horseshoes at the same time. It's more efficient anyway to make, you know, two at the same time rather than one after the other because you're sitting there waiting, twiddling your thumbs for that steel to heat up uh, before you can take it out and bang on it. So that kind of eats up half your time. And that's one thing that Gavin's doing differently here today, which he's lucky is he's got the Coke Forge, uh, which you burn the Coke uh, like an old coal blacksmithing type of forge that you might be uh, familiar with. But yeah. um, coke is a refined form of coal, burns hotter and faster. Right. And it just allows you to heat up your steel. It's, it's powered off of air, you know. So you, you open that air gate, you got a big blower fan on it, and it just, you know, instantaneously heats it up. You could heat it up to, to melting temperature. 
temperature in, you know, 10, 20 seconds probably. About half the time as it would take for a propane to heat up a section of steel. Right. And the difference in, in that material getting hot sometimes can can really uh, be beneficial because the coke fire tends to really heat, you know, throughout that steel, especially if you're working a heavier section of steel, a, a thicker piece of metal. It's really beneficial. Um, you know, the, the propane kind of tends to heat from the outside in, and you know, it takes a little while for that to happen, especially if you're doing some upsetting or bumping of the steel where you actually have to quench it off and then reheat it, which we're gonna have to do. Basically, you always have to do if you're making horseshoes. Generally, um, yep. You know, depending on what you're making, but for the most part. Um, so, yeah, the uh, the coke fire is is uh, is a bonus. That'll be a. But it's not necessarily easier. You have to be very diligent and pay attention to where your steel is at if you're working on two shoes at one time, because coke burns so hot it'll actually melt your steel and your steel will disappear. Right. So it's That's, not necessarily, I wouldn't call it lucky. No, it's a, no, it's a it's bit a, of advantage. But it's a skill of its own. You have to be very, you know, you have to know what you're doing to run a coke fire. That's the difference. Uh, propane forge, you know, anybody can throw a piece of steel in and you can go walk off, <laughs> go take a bathroom break, come back, <laughs> have a sip of coffee. You're good. You know, you don't what ever have, yeah. really have to worry about it overheating. Um, this, you know, it's it does get really scaly and, and, and slag on it a lot when, when you're in the propane compared to the, the Coke Forge. But yeah, no, the, the Coke Forge, you know, you, you take the, the difficulties with the benefits, so you have to be skilled at it. It's a skill of its own to run a Coke Forge and uh, do it efficiently, especially if you're building pairs of horseshoes, like I said, where you have one in the fire, taking one out, working on it, putting another one in. You gotta make sure that one that's in the fire um, you know, isn't burning up as you're as you're working on your other one. So, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a skill of its own, keeping a good fire going, but also just controlling your air is the main thing with those coke fires. You gotta, you know, be really on your toes. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, letting that go. <laughs> You'll find out. You'll find out quick when you, when you do. So today, our schedule is basically like we have the eagle eye first and then they'll judge the shoes how they go and then there's the eagle eye 2.0 but this is kind of new to us we're not really sure it's new to the format so we're not really sure what the 2.0 is yet and then our judge is going to do some demonstrations <clears throat> and then uh, we go into our forging classes this afternoon where we have to you know build two shoes at one time yeah, the forging classes are difficult in this contest. I'd say they're pretty advanced, uh, especially for our state level contest. But um, there but is three divisions as well. So yeah. there's the novice, intermediate, and then we're doing the open, which is the the highest level that you can compete at in most this state. Most yeah, difficult. most difficult. Yep. Right. So they do try and accommodate everybody to make it a, a you know doable thing for. For everybody's skill set. Yeah, everybody's skill set. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these these state deals are pretty cool because the guys coming from Wyoming, you know, so they they hire these um, Troy Irvin clinicians, Trout. yeah, yep. to come from all over the place and kind of show you what they think is the best way to do things, and you know, you just always end up walking away with something that you never would have even thought. Uh, you learn something every time, and, and it's cool with this deal because they'll have. Like, you know, Gavin was saying, they'll have the, the clinician, he'll be doing, uh, you know, demonstrations uh, throughout the day, every day, I think. So, you know, we'll see him shoe some feet, we'll see him make some horseshoes. Oh yeah, one of the classes, which is kind of a little bit different, is uh, we have to build a pair of hot fit tongs. Yeah, that's a trick. The open competitors have to build the tongs so that we get paired up with an intermediate. Randomly. Randomly, so we don't get to pick our partner. So that's, that's that'll be a test of its own as well, and that's something new for the uh, it's, Washington competition too. Yeah, it's made to be made to be kind of a training exercise, I think, especially for the lower divisions to be your striker, which is the guy who has the uh, sledgehammer who's going to be hammering on the other side of the anvil for you, which is trying to draw out the range. Yeah, which is so critical with this class. I mean, it's just you start out with five and a half 
inches of, of three quarter inch round, right? And you're making it into 16 inches long of a, you know, probably what, five sixteenths by three, three eighths or so section of where the handle is on your, on your tongs, yep. which is what holds your horseshoe or your, in this case, hold, yeah, it holds your horseshoe, uh, in this case to burn it onto a horse's foot to check your fit. But basically there's all sorts of, you know, blacksmithing tongs. If you are familiar at all with that, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, but a lot of foraging involved in getting those reins drawn out and you basically need a striker But now you're getting randomly uh, set up with a uh, striker and you kind of gonna have to hope that they uh, You know know how to swing a hammer a little bit because um, It's gonna be a tough class regardless, but that that really makes it tough for, for a guy like me who doesn't necessarily build tools for a living, you know, it's uh, you're, you're learning a new skill set, you know, so <laughs> Um, mostly farriers. Yeah, you know. I have a little bit of this. knowledge of baking tools. Right, you know, and it's it all comes with the territory. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're trying to get better, trying to develop those traditional skill sets and, and be able to carry them on. Hopefully someday to be able to teach somebody else. Maybe somebody, you know, want to hire 